I will say before you depart, though, you need to make a play. Uh, uh, the consequences of this play will become known to you in the future. Uh-oh. If you succeed, the consequences will be known to you now. If not, then, as I said, you will find out what happens in the future. So uh, you're heading back to the ship. Uh, basically, like, th this... Imagine you're walking back to the ship, and as you're, like, getting ready to board again, uh, time slows down, and then that's when the play happens. This is going to be a three-card challenge. Because we are very well prepared, I suggest that Dawn gets rid of some of those cards in her hand, and we just deal with whatever the badness is. Okay, I'm down with that. I like to be surprised. What skill are you using for this? Nightly Radiance, because I'm okay. always radiant. All right. All right. I've got my cards picked. Hey, me too. I, I, yeah, no, go for it. <laughs> All right. And flip. Okay. My, I've got a six, a four, and a two. I got a five, a nine, and a jack. And okay. this is subterfuge, so that crowns. Okay. <laughs> With a five. Do we have a so, stowaway? That'd be great. Ooh. So that is 29. Okay. Uh, my total is 12. That beats you by quite a margin. You all return to the ship, uh, chatting amongst yourselves about names for your new cat that you want to get, about which about which bee that you want to let hold the cat first. Don uh, suddenly, like, doubles over, gripping her chest. <clears throat> oh, oh, wow. You suddenly get that feeling sometimes that you just got extremely unlucky and life just kicked you in the ribs. This always happens when you drink water straight. <laughs> <laughs> With no chaser. <laughs> oh, you're right. I should have gotten some milk too, Clover. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very delicate pH balance in your body. I tell you this every time. <laughs> milk before water. You're in for a slaughter. Water before milk. <laughs> Don quietly repeats her lessons to herself. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah, you board your ship, and uh, unless you have anything else you want to do, it's time to disembark. Okay, let's do it. All right, you depart from Bright, uh, sailing through the cloudless skies and diving down away from the heat into the ever-present cold of the night beneath you, chasing the trail, uh, that lightning-scented trail that Quigley's nose knows how to track. I was just going to say very quietly under his breath, like leaning over the mast. Getting a cat. One of the chancelling wanders up, like stares up at Quigley. Don's like, no, no, don't bother him right now. He's focused. Serious business. The dark can be fatal. Don just turns him around and, like, starts to shove him away. Quigley or Chonsling? <laughs> Chonsling, not Quigley. Quigley's doing his thing. <laughs> I know better than to disturb him when he's like this. <laughs> so you are about to dive into the dark. This is going to take weeks. Uh, Ooh. It is quite a distance away, the place that Alicia mentioned that uh, her, her leader, the leader of these people, the one in possession of the Storm Sound Sonata, uh, would be located at uh it is going to take you quite some time to get to the altitude in the dark where she will be more time to find it and even more time to get back out if you play it risky uh you are going to be uh you're going to be down there for quite some time uh thankfully you have come quite prepared uh, thanks to Clover and her kindness uh and money and bread <laughs> uh, and you have also thanks to Don and uh, Quigley, you have prepped the crew. Kerblow! You have prepped the crew for what they might encounter. Uh, and I'm going to be doing something different here. This is going to be a series of montages. Ooh. Uh, each one is going to designate a somewhat large passage of time. Uh, so if between montages there's anything you'd like to say or do to the crew, uh, let me know. Uh, uh, all right. As you begin your descent... Uh, you see quickly approaching you an enormous storm cloud. 
quickly. You recognize its stench quite clearly. This was set up for anybody that might come pursuing uh, the woman with uh, electricity about her eyes. Uh, this is the work of the Storm Sound Sonata. Uh, this is a cloud rife with lightning and angry with rain. Uh, you are going to need to do some impressive wheeling to make it through this unscathed. And who does that wheeling and how they do it is up to you and your crew. Captain? <laughs> pa- navigator? <laughs> Cookie baker? <laughs> I-, I just wanted to rhyme. Um, <laughs> are we in the dark yet or pursuing? No, you are not in the dark yet. You are still in the light. Okay. And this is a man-made storm cloud. Correct. It was made with the Storm Sound Sonata. Quigley's just gonna, um, he's gonna consult Elysia. He's gonna ask her, like, so, we're not in the dark yet. Do you think Vitskotskia would have just left a cloud like that and continued on whatever mission she was going, or... Yes, would there be she some doesn't need you- to be present to control the clouds. That's what's terrifying about the artifact. What- oh, she still has complete control over that. Yes. Oh, okay. And she knows she's trying to get us, right? She wants to stop you. She's... Is she aware that her crew is on board? (laughs) She wouldn't be, no. I imagine she thinks that we've either been killed or turned into the guild. Does she have any uh, means of seeing through these storm clouds? Not seeing, no, but have you ever stepped close to someone? Not really touched them, but been aware of their presence? Mm-hmm. They provide almost a sixth sense. Like a cat's whiskers, almost. So can you mm. yell at mm. the cloud? <laughs> I don't think that would work. Hmm. I mean, you can yell at the cloud. I'm just, I don't think it'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can yell at the cloud if need be, also. Kablooey. <laughs> Damn. You're trying to speak cloud. Um, make a play to make friends with the storm. <laughs> I, 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 I'm tempted just to save time to literally just go under it a la when you like to scale a mountain you don't just go straight up you kind of like spiral around it while going up so it's not a terrible incline just to like dive underneath the storm and keep going down okay that would be we do have the supplies so if the trip goes a little longer so yeah, yeah. I, I, I am a little afraid that we'll be just like every few days we'll find another one of these storms and they'll just be conga lining behind us but you know what actually if we if we find her and negotiate it she can undo the storm so that won't be a problem right ideally once we find her we'll be able to talk things out yes (laughs) (laughs) all right let's do it then all right this will be a play to uh basically keep everything on the ship sorry everything and everyone on the ship uh while you centrifuge your way straight down to avoid Diving through the storm. Right. I'd say it's going to be a three-card challenge. Um, I'm going to use ups and downs, my unnatural ability to weave through dangerous obstacles no matter the chaos, especially vertical spaces. Nice. That's really good. If you succeed, what would you like? Um, I would like to <clears throat> get past this storm and not immediately have it, like, turn and be a giant, like, you cannot go okay. down there, face that follows <laughs> us down. So, get past the storm and not have it be a problem in the future. I can assist. Yes. Okay. If you fail, uh, you will get past the storm. Uh, there's no guarantee that it won't be a problem in the future, uh, and you will lose one crew member in your descent. <gasps> Hopefully it's not Oof. the really handsome one. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's real. That's, that's real concerning. That's really risky. I'm okay with it because I think we got to start ramping up yeah, to danger. We do. <laughs> All right. Got to get rid of some of these bad cards too. I'm ready to flip. Yep. And flip. I got a queen, uh, a three, oh, and a two. <laughs> Six and an eight. Ooh. What'd you get, uh, Faust? I got a queen, a three, and a two. Okay. You said 15. you could assist, right, Jay? Yes, I did. Well, I've got a 15. 14. I assisted with a 4. Okay. So you beat it by 3. <laughs> it's pretty narrow. 
Clover, as you're standing near the end of the ship, being the most heavily armored, as you spiral your way down, you feel kind of like a tingle along your spine, but it quickly passes as you descend further and further and further. It was going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> and, the only uh, one who didn't participate. I guess that's the best case scenario. <laughs> yep. uh, and, and you actually, uh, you're standing next to the guard railing, just for such an occasion, uh, as one of the bees comes tumbling your way, not fully prepared for Quigley's style. Uh, but you catch her and send her like back, uh, set her back on the ship safe and sound. <laughs> you need to be more careful when Quigley is driving a soldi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, it, it's so strange. I, I don't know how he moves the ship like that. Just go back to your quarters and don't worry about it. Don All right, let me know when it's safe. Don is clinging to the same railing, puts up a finger and offers a helpful, this is the form of my support, when a ship falls like this, it's called hawking. <laughs> She's proud of herself knowing the sailing terminology. Flaria looks at you and nods. If anyone is afraid of my piloting style, they're free to take one of the scaredy cat bungee cables and tie themselves to the mast. <laughs> Dawn motions and shows how it's done on herself. There is one tied to her. <laughs> Don will now demonstrate as I go very hard to the left. <laughs> Bang! Don, Don goes flying off the ship and bounces back on awkwardly. Clover is Clover is untethered and doesn't budge. <laughs> Clover stands perfectly still, and there are like scrape marks on the ship. <laughs> she, like, moves in her armor, but is completely unaffected. <laughs> Quigley, after after piloting, after you are sure that you have cleared the storm clouds uh, domain uh, and the ship is on a steady course downward and doesn't need your complete attention, uh, you do a quick round of the ship. You find the personal possessions of one of the ship's bees just kind of scattered on the floor, which is a bit uncharacteristic uh, of this particular bee. Um, so they're just like, is this inside or they're, like, they're, is their bag of marbles just on the deck floating around? Uh, no, it was as you went below deck to grab a refreshing lemonade, <laughs> you noticed that their bag of marbles is just kind of dropped in one of the hallways. Hmm. Remus never leaves his bag of marbles here. <laughs> <laughs> Not after our other bees tripped on it. <laughs> <laughs> Quigley goes to Ramus's quarters to uh, ret return the marbles and maybe scold. <laughs> uh, Ramus isn't there, but you do return the marbles to his quarters. Um, Quigley goes above deck and finds Clover. Have you seen Ramus anywhere? Hmm. Ramus, no. I've seen Alessia. I've seen uh, Peregrine. <laughs> I've seen Isold. Uh, I actually just sent her back to her room, but I haven't seen Ramus, no. Has anyone seen Ramus? Do we need to have a roll call? I think we need to have a roll call. <laughs> Clover is visibly upset. <laughs> Qu Quigley, Quigley looks at a, a couple of bees have tied themselves to the mast. Yeah, they're, um, they're, on the hanging. He, they're dangling he looks to see if any alongside Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> he looks to see if... Well, you, you're not just hanging under the ship, are you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm... I, no, actually, uh, I've sort of been hanging off of the railing. I found a cool way to make sort of a hammock. She comes it herself doesn't... free and falls down. <laughs> oh, do you need a roll call? Okay, crew, roll call! Yeah. Well, while the roll is being called, Quigley looks to see if there's any bungee cables leaning over the sides in case Ramus is doing another one of his famous hee-hee, I'm hanging off the rudder <laughs> jokes. <laughs> uh, no, Ramus, that jokester is not playing a prank on you this time. Uh, after the roll call, you do find out that he's missing. Where could he have gone? That is concerning. Hmm. When was the last time anyone saw Ramus? Well, he couldn't have left the ship. Uh, Flaria speaks up. He was on the deck whenever you did your, your stunt, but after that, he went back down deck to polish his marbles, but... Oh, oh my. No, no, I mean, literally, he, he went down to, you know, he, Why he's, are you he's got his marble collection. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Donna Clover kind of chuckle a bit. <laughs> Quigley doesn't get it. <laughs> Anyway, it seems like we've got a mystery on our hands. Why don't you keep all of the crew up here if there's some sort of, like, wild beast downstairs or some sort of danger? Stop looking at me like that. This actually happened once back at Academy. Some people in the we need to keep some people in the engine room. Oh, yeah, of course. Then just, hmm, hmm. 
Is there any way to safely seal off the engine room? There could be something surprising on deck. Honestly, crazier things have happened than a, uh, some sort of creature from the sky finding its way in. Or there could something be a stowaway. Surprising? Or... Oh, yeah, no, we used to. We got up to some stuff back at the academy. All right, things well, happened. <laughs> I suppose I can keep the crew on deck for now. What, what do you think is... I need more information about the situation. That's what we hope to find out. If somebody went missing on a ship like this, especially after the storm, it means that there's probably something else on the boat, or there's, a, unfortunately, a hole or something that nobody else noticed, which is a far sadder and less exciting conclusion. Okay. Uh, deal with it quickly, I guess. <laughs> quickly, Clover, let's I go! Will. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Mystery team away! <laughs> they walk off, all three of them together. <laughs> Almost like we've done this before. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>